of the second green revolution, yeah. biotechnology. You know, I spent a, almost a decade studying that in the Canadian context. Percy Schmeiser, the patenting of life. You know, we have corporations in this country and around the world that own life forms. They own the genetic material of these life forms. They have got basmati rice that you fought for in your home country of India. You know, they own canola in Canada. They own mammals. They actually own genes in our bodies. And you fought so hard for this. You fought so hard in defense of life. And I just would like you to kind of share that battle and what it means to you with this audience. Well, you know, I, because I'd done the work on the Green Revolution, I got invited to a conference on biotechnology in 87, organized by the Daghammer Joel Foundation, which has been set up in Sweden uh, in the memory of the first Secretary General of the United Nations. And um, Pat Mooney um, was involved also in this, uh, organizing this conference. It was on biotechnology called Laws of Life, and the industry was there. And they talked about how they needed to do genetic engineering to get patents. And they talked about how they needed free trade to be able to spread both their, uh, both the, uh, the legal framework of all forcing countries to patent life, as well as be able to acquire local seed companies. And I don't think there is an emergency as big as what we face on the issue of seed related to agriculture. Because most domestic seed companies have been bought up. In India, cotton, we used to have 1,500 varieties. Indian cotton farmers were extremely prosperous. Monsanto came in started to buy up the Indian companies or take, make licensing arrangements with them, pushed its GM cotton, the BT cotton. Farmers got into debt. A new phenomenon of farmer suicide started. And the farmer suicides have today reached a quarter million in the last decade and a half. Quarter million Indian farmers have committed suicide. Um, but it was just listening to them saying, no, we'll have, it's not fair that farmers save seed. It's not fair that farmers save seed. <laughs> You've got to stop it. And so they wrote this whole intellectual property rights agreement, and Monsanto is on record saying, you know, a representative called James en Enyart of Monsanto said after the WTO uh, was established that we've written this intellectual property treaty. We defined a problem, and the problem was farmers save seed, and we offered a solution. It should be a crime. And we were the patient and diagnostician and physician all in one. Um, and to me, this was like a dictatorship over life. I've called it bioimperialism. And that's when I went home and started to save seeds and started Navdanya. Um, and a lot of people think, oh, patterns on life are now there and you can't challenge it, you can't change it. And you might remember there used to be slavery. People thought it was right to own human beings as property, trade in them, and make them work as slaves. Some people think it's all right to define life and seed and genetic material as an invention. It's not an invention, you know. You put a gene into a plant, you're not creating that plant. It's like bringing a chair into this hall. And just because you brought a chair or bringing a mat into this hall, if you'd carried a mat to sit on the floor and you said, I brought this mat, and therefore I'm the architect of this building, I'm the landowner, <laughs> the university should pay me a rent. <laughs> That's what's going on with patenting of life. You know, they put one gene and say, now the plant and all its future generations, and if our GM plant contaminates your field and even your crop is mine, which is Percy Smyser's case, and in Percy's case, I remember they said, if contamination is the way we are going to take control, we are going to spread contamination. 
But now they've, you know, they've, because the issue was patenting, then they start to patent Indian wheat. We fought that case. Fighting a new case where they patented a new a melon. If you look at the patents on climate resilient crops, they have everything under the sun. You know, if, if you do breeding, you work with one plant over years and you develop a particular trait, or, you know, a resistance to a particular pest. They're, the patterns they're taking are now patterns to cold stress, heat stress, drought, flood, everything in one pattern, and every crop under the sun in one single pattern. Because they know with climate change, there will be more value of climate resilient traits, and they would like to be able to collect rents. Now, they've managed to spread the false impression that genetic engineering creates these traits. Genetic engineering has only managed to create two traits, herbicide resistance and Bt toxins. So what they basically do is steal the plants and crops that third world farmers have evolved. In Navdanya, you know, we started to save everything. And then in 99, we had a cyclone in Orissa and the salt tolerant seeds we had saved were able to bring back agriculture. 2004, you might remember the Asian tsunami. And the waves came in three miles. There was salt on the land. The government gave up and said, for five years, we won't be able to do agriculture. And we said, no, we can. We'll bring you salt tolerant seeds from Orissa. Mm -hmm. And we carried two truckloads from the farmers of Orissa to the farmers of Tamil Nadu. And within a season, they had a crop which did very, very well. Some of our seeds were taken by Indonesian farmers. And actually, the production increased even more. Because sometimes when you relocate, you do even better. Sometimes you do worse. Um, so the, the entire biotechnology enterprise is based on false claims. We've actually done a report recently um, because, you know, the Indian farmers were committing suicide and Monsanto's ad said, farmers pride, India's pride. Bolgard 2. They don't tell you why Bolgard 1 is not talked about anymore <laughs> because it's not controlling pests. And now they're getting ready with Bolgard 3. And I love to quote Einstein on this issue. You know, Einstein had told us, if um, a clear sign of insanity is to keep doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different outcome. You know, three stacks of Roundup resistance genes aren't going to stop creating superweeds. They'll make faster superweeds. So our report on GM, worldwide report, we published. It's available on the Navdanya website. We eventually decided, you know, how much can you labor with scientific titles? So the content is extremely well researched, extremely well supported by evidence and facts. But our title is The GMO Emperor Has No Clothes. Because I think we've got to become like children in that Hans Christensen story to recognize that the emperor is naked. Thank you.